It is possible to add HTML contents dynamically to a web page using JavaScript programs. A JavaScript program allows you to create a new HTML element dynamically. You can add this newly created HTML element to the web page by using JavaScript code. You can add an HTML content to another existing HTML element by using JavaScript. And you can also remove HTML elements from the web page dynamically. So what we want here is, we want to add a new div element to this web page. And we want to add that div element dynamically from our JavaScript code. And that div element should also have some child elements. So our div element should something should look something like this. So if I uncomment this HTML code from here, and if I save the changes, you will see that we have some HTML content here. Okay, and we have added this content to this web page from our HTML code. But instead of creating these, you know, creating this web page content from HTML, we want to add this content to this web page from our JavaScript code. So let me comment this HTML code again, save this and that content has been disappeared from the web page. Now let's go ahead and create this div element and then add this h2 element and this form element to this div element from our JavaScript code. And the first thing which we have to do here is we have to create a new div element. To create a new HTML element dynamically from your JavaScript code, you can use create element method of document object. So this document object has this create element method. And to this create element method, we can pass the name of the element which we want to create. And we want to create a div element. So let's pass div. And this will create a div element and it will return it. So let's store it in a variable and let's call it div element. Next, what we want to do is we want to add some content to this newly created div element. And let's start by adding some text content. So here we want to add some text content to this div element. And we can do that by using another method on this document object, which is create text node. And to this, let's pass some string and let's say this is newly created div element. Okay, a simple text like this. Let's assign it to a variable and let's simply call it text node. Okay, so here we have created a new text node. Now we have to add this text node to this div element. So the third step is to add this text node or add content to div element. To add a content to an existing element, we have two methods append child method and insert before method. The append child method adds a new element at the end of a specified parent node. So if the parent node has, let's say three elements, three child elements, then this append child will add the new element at the end of those three child elements after those three child elements. And this insert before will add the new element at the beginning of any other child element. So let's use this append child method to add the text content to our newly created div. So let's say div element dot append child and we want to add this child to this div element. All right. Now, the final thing which we have to do here is we need to add this newly created div element to our web page. Now, where do we want to add this div element? If I go to index.html file and if I scroll up, you will see that we have a div with this class container. And it is this container div which contains all other elements which we have in this web page. Okay, so the image, h1, p element, everything which we have in this web page except this header is present inside this container div. And we want to add this new div element to this container div 
and this new div element should be added at the end of all other child elements which is there in this container div okay so we can do it in two steps the first in the first step we will have to get access to that container div and we can use query selector method to get access to that container div since this container div has only a class it does not have a id okay so here we are getting access to this container div let's store it in a variable and let's call it container div all right now let's append this div element to this container div so again let's say container div dot append child and we want to append this div element so let's pass it to this append child method let's save the changes and if i scroll down you will see that this div with this content this is newly created div element has been added to this div now let's go back to our index.html file and if i scroll up this is what we want to achieve right from our javascript program so here we have added this new div and this dish this div should exactly look like this div and if you notice this div has a class okay so let's add this class dynamically to our newly created div let's copy this class name let's go to script.js file and we have already learned how to add a class dynamically to an element so let's say div element dot and if you remember we used class list property and this class list property has this add method and to this we can pass the class which we want to attach dynamically to an element and next thing is this div element also has some style and we have set the margin top to 13 pixel so let's do this dynamically from our javascript code again div element dot style dot margin top let's set it to 30 pixel let's save the changes and here you will notice that now this div has some background color and there is some margin between these two divs all right now here we are adding some text content to this div but if i go to this index.html file you will notice that we don't have any text content for this div for this div we have an h2 element and a form element so we want to add these this h2 element and this form element to our newly created div and to add an html content to a div to an element we can use in a html property and we have already talked about in a html property in one of the lectures of this section so let's see how to do that so let's say div element i have commented these two because we don't want this text content anymore and let's say div element dot inner html and let's use this let's copy this h2 element from here and let's pass it here all right if i save the changes now you can see inside this div we have this h2 element we also want to add this form element to this div now we cannot use in a html again because when we use in a html property it simply replaces the existing content with the new content and in this div we want to have this h2 element as well as this form element so if i use this in a html property and assign it with this form element it will this form element will simply replace this h2 element and we don't want that so the another way to achieve this is by using insert adjacent html method the insert adjacent html method can be used to insert a new html element to the parent node without replacing the existing content this method accepts two parameters the position and the element and the position must be one of the following it can be before begin after begin before end or after end so let's use this before end position all right first let's create a variable and let's call this variable form element and i'm going to use backticks here because we want to 
span over multiple lines and let's copy this form element okay and let's paste it inside this back ticks let's use semicolon to end it now let's say a div element and on this div element let's use insert adjacent html uh, insert adjacent html okay and the first parameter should be the position so we want to use before end and the second parameter should be the element so let's copy this variable name form element and let's pass this to this insert adjacent html let's save the changes if i scroll down here you can see this form element has also been added and it did it did not replace this you know h2 element this h2 element is also there and this form element has been added after that h2 element okay so in this way we have generated some html content dynamically from our web page in the next lecture you will learn how to add a content to a web page dynamically when the click event happens